Hey guys, if you're looking to put your vining houseplants to work and upping your moss pool game and having social media worthy plants and plant homes, then this is the video for you. So basically we're taking Brandy here from the Hilton Garden Inn and we're moving her on up to the Four Seasons. She deserves it. Having your vining plants in the right pot with the correct moss pool, so it's looking great on Insta and TikTok, and your plant is healthy and thriving, takes time and expertise. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through and showing you how to create a functional and beautiful moss pole and how to do the entire setup for your vining plants. Now, any vining plants will do. I particularly like to use philodendron for this kind of setup because if you start with a younger uh, plant and get this thing going earlier on, then as time goes and as the philodendron climbs up the moss pool, the leaves will get bigger and it will just be amazing to look at and great for the plant. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler, and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in learning the difference between what it means in staking your philodendron with a stake or a moss pole versus letting it sort of do its thing, then I did an entire video on that and it would be a great idea to check that out. So I will throw up the link. So if you've seen a moss pole like this before, the one I'm holding, so personally I find that these function more as a bamboo stake or just as a stake rather than an actual moss pole that the plant can climb up and embed itself in. Um, so, Basically, I guess what I'm saying is these are probably best to be avoided. Um, just save your cash and yourself the time and the hassle because uh, basically, I don't really think that these work very well. If you're interested in a full list of tools and supplies to get this project started, then take a look for that list in the description down below. Oh yeah, and if you're interested in more content like this, then please give this video a thumbs up or share some comments down below. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is find some great looking pots. Now, depending on the size of your plant, you're gonna wanna find something that is a little bit bigger than its existing pot. It needs to be probably a little bit bigger than what you would typically go with so that you have space for uh, your new moss pole and that's gonna take up some volume in there. If you have too much soil mix, in your new pot that can hold on to basically too much moisture, then you are putting your plant at risk for root rot and a whole bunch of other problems. So something to keep in mind. All right, so once you have your pots ready to go, basically the next thing you're going to need to pick up is some wire mesh. All right, so I've cut out a second uh, piece of the wiring. Now, one of the huge benefits of a technique like this is you can extend your moss pole in terms of height um, and keep adding different portions to it. Okay, so once you've given your uh, wire some initial sort of shaping, you wanna get it basically to the shape that you're going to use, but leave it uh, open so that you can um, fill it obviously with your sphagnum moss. Now, last night I went ahead and kind of spritzed some water on this. Now, when you're working with sphagnum moss, it's a good idea to do that um, a little bit before you're working with it because this product needs to have some moisture in it 
in order for it to be able to retain moisture. All right, so I've gone ahead and put in a whole bunch of sphagnum moss. Now, another benefit of keeping this stuff a little bit wet when you're using it is you're gonna make a lot less of a mess which is great because this stuff can get pretty messy if it's dry. Um, so as you can see at the bottom here, I've left um, some space where I haven't put in any moss and that's because after I'm done closing the cylinder, I'm going to use those um, wire cutters and cut this open and that's gonna help stabilize it when it's in the pot. All right, so I went ahead and used my needle nose pliers to very patiently and carefully get rid of any sharp uh, pieces sticking out, but also using those little sharp pieces to loop over and to the other side to create a sort of closed uniform piece. And like I said, I left some of the bottom um, without any sphagnum mosses because what I'm going to do is use the wire cutters to go down um, basically both sides. Hopefully you can see that way the plant can, or the moss pole can sit in nicely, but closer to the back, leaving more space at the front for the plant. So let me show you how to stabilize this in the pot and what to do next. All right, so I'm gonna be adding some river rock. I picked up some black river rock here and I'm gonna be adding a layer of that uh, at the base of the pot and that's just going to help stabilize and keep the moss pole really nice and secure because we went ahead and cut that wire open and there's a little uh, base of wiring at the bottom of the pot those rocks will actually sit on that and do an even better job at stabilizing this whole moss pole so i'm going to go ahead put the rocks on and then show you what i do after that all right so now this thing is a lot more stable um, because I've gone ahead and put the river rock at the bottom, um, but rocks can actually hold on to moisture and that can be bad for the plant. So what I'm going to be doing is using this product here, which is a horticultural charcoal, and I'm going to be putting a bunch of that on top of the rocks. Some of it will work its way through, some of it will sit on top, and that's going to absorb, that's going to absorb any excess moisture which is wonderful and like i said it's going to kind of act like drainage holes so let me go ahead and add that to this and then that is almost basically the entire setup but there are a few more important things that i'm going to show you uh, when you're transferring your plant to its new home all right so i'm going to be using um, this soil mix here and this is a combination of peat moss coconut coir and perlite for drainage. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed as much soil as I possibly can, and you can see there's a nice, beautiful, fuzzy, healthy roots on this plant. So now it's a matter of carefully uh, positioning this plant um, very carefully, like I said, in the pot like so. All right, so as the final step in this entire process, I've gone ahead and used some twist tie type like coated wiring to very thoughtfully and carefully attach the plant in a select few places um, to the moss pole. Now there are a few things that you're gonna want to think of and consider. So uh, you're gonna want to attach the plant um, very carefully uh, at the base of the stems that are attached to the leaves and that's where the little nodes are and those are what will um, at some points grow and connect itself to the moss pole. Now just keep in mind, don't tie the plant too tight to the moss pole. It needs to have some space. Also, you're not gonna wanna tie the very top because that's where the new growth is coming out and um, it needs to not be constrained in any sort of way. Um, and then to get a little bit more finished look, you can tuck in um, the little twist ties and the wiring into the moss pole so it just gives it a nicer uh, finished look. All right, to see these on social media, head to my Insta page at Tyler Moss Up. And that's it for me. Oh yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or 
better yet, hit that subscribe button. Miss you guys already. Until the next one.